Oh, that's exactly where they need to be anyway. Just, just let them just burn up. <coughs> Y'all know how we get? We get that way. But Jonah got this way because his was not a suicidal spirit. There is another problem we have in our human nature. It's called a human sin nature. If we allow selfishness to take over our life and be so self-consumed that we're not consumed with the needs of others or to love others like we should, that self will cause you to actually want to commit suicide. You know why? Because if you do not get what you want and what self thinks it needs, eventually it will want to give up. It's going to be my way or I'd rather die. This is what Jonah was going through. His hate for the Ninevites was so much so that he allowed his hate to interfere with his relationship with God. And, and I'm not judging Jonah because if we knew how the Ninevites were, we would understand. There's some people God tries to send us to that we don't want to go to just simply over material things that they've heard us with. Or something small, maybe it was some gossip or just a mouth thing. These Ninevites were barbarians. And Jonah and his family might have experienced what they would do. They were the Assyrians. Nineveh is it's right there on the Tigris River in Iraq. And what they used to do is they'd go take cities over, and they were so harsh when they'd come in that some cities, would, the whole city would commit suicide before the Assyrians came in because they were so barbaric. What they would do is they would skin people alive. They would bury the man up to his head in sand, take his tongue out with a leather strap, nail it down where he could not swallow, and allow him to bake in the sun. And they, most men lost their mind. Mm. They would take the women captive and kill all the children and all the men. Isn't that something? Now they attacked Israel many times, this Assyrians. Assyrian, excuse me. But Jonah might have experienced this. And this may be why he had so much hate in his heart. And when the word of the Lord came forth, and he knew it was the right word. He knew the Lord, he was a prophet of the Lord. But when he came forth, he said, No, I want them to die. I've got so much hate and bitterness in my heart because of the evil that they've done, which, like I said, I'm not judging Jonah because we haven't been in that place. We don't know if the Assyrians have come into our life and done that to our family or done that to our people we know. How would we react? Y'all see what I'm saying? This makes it a little bit more clear why Jonah took off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And why he went, when he was supposed to be going east, he went to the far west. God <coughs> called him to go into this direction and he went into that direction. You ever done that? We do it sometimes. But this was serious. But it's really serious when we allow the bitterness, the prejudice, the hate, the unforgiveness in our personal lives to come between our relationship with God. Do you know it can hinder it? Doesn't mean he don't love you. It doesn't mean that he won't wrap his arms around you. But still, he's trying to get that stuff out of us so he can have better communion with us. You know what I mean? It kind of paints a cloud over your head when he's trying to speak to you because we have all that going on. And then eventually, if we stay in that mode of hate, we wound up like Jonah in a situation. And he's in a situation here. However, praise God, look at verse 17. Even though the storm did not wake Jonah up. I mean, he sent a storm to wake him up. The shipmaster had to go down there and wake him up. The storm didn't bother Jonah. It's like the storms that's going on around us right now in this United States is not bothering a lot of people. You ever notice that? They're just burying their head in the sand saying, it'll get better one day. I'm not going to let it bother me. I understand that. And if you're in Christ, you've got a hope in the future, praise God, and there's no fear in Jesus. But if you're not right with God, you might want to look at the surroundings and say, Lord Jesus, I think I might need to repent and get right with you. Things ain't looking too good here. Amen. That's what it's designed to do. It's a strategically ordained situation designed to get us closer to Jesus and save our soul. That's grace. It may not look like grace. It may look pretty rough. And it doesn't have to be this way. But dealing with humankind many times, you know how we are. It was that way for me. I got to be honest with you. I had a hard shell for the Lord to crack. But he knew how to crack. Amen. And I thank him for it. And I will not change any of my testimony. I would not change one day of the storm 
I would not change one day of being in the whale's belly. Because I know now that he put that there for me to be saved. Amen. Mm -hmm. And sealed. And be with him through eternity. That's love. Praise God. Y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. It says, 17, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. Mm. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Now this would definitely show and point to Jesus Christ being in the belly of the earth three days and three nights and a sin. But also this shows us that the accommodations that the Lord has prepared for us sometimes are not what we would like to have. Mm. <laughs> it's not like we make a reservation at the Hilton Come on. and say, I want the hot tub. <laughs> Oh yeah, I want breakfast in the morning. Uh, oh, it's three or four hundred dollars. That's no, no, no problem. I, I like my accommodations really wealthy. Mm -hmm. Now, the fish's belly was probably not the best accommodations. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and I'm sure there's people that say, "Well, that that can't be God." But we see right here in the scriptures sure. that it is the Lord. All right. And there's people that get mad and frustrated when you tell them that God will prepare something like that. He will send an SOS. A strategically ordained situation to do another SOS to save our souls. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And it's designed out of love yeah. and mercy. We can look at Jonah all the wrong way, but I'm telling you, I see the blessing of God in this. Come on. I see the mercy of God in this. And it just thrills my soul to watch this. Mm -hmm. Because I know he's got an SOS prepared for many of the people we're praying for. Many of the loved ones we're praying for. Many of the leaders were praying for. Mm -hmm. Many of the people all over the world were praying, praying for. He's got an event coming that's going to shake them away. Like I said, mm -hmm. the storm didn't bother Jonah. That's pretty serious enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got a death. <laughs> there is a, a threatening, life-threatening storm on the ship, and it didn't bother him. Mm -hmm. Didn't even wake him. He had to be wakened by a man. And then that didn't face him. Mm -hmm. He said, I'd rather die. Didn't go God's way what he's told me to do? I'd rather die. Just told me to over. And that suicidal thing jumped on. Hmm. It's going to be my way or I'd rather die. I'm not going God's way. But now we see something a little bit different here. Hmm. Now, out of mercy and seeing that Jonah was a little suicidal, God still protected him. All right. He still protected him and had a fish swallow him up. Wouldn't even let him kill himself. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? That's how God sees us. Also, there's times that we get so we get self-destructive in, in our behavior sometimes. Mm -hmm. Many people get on chemicals because they're self-destructive in their own behavior. And God still protects them through it. Watches over them. Delivers them out of it. And saves their soul. Now here he is. And he's in a 